I'm about to make dinner. And boom, the Miami Dolphins signed Clay's Campbell. I was going to make a video later tonight talking about the Trevor Lawrence contract, but I guess we'll do them both right now. What is up, Finn fans? The Miami Dolphins have signed defensive lineman Calais Campbell. For how much? I don't know. But six-time Pro Bowler defensive end Calais Campbell signing with the Dolphins. Uh, sources tell me and rap sheet. Calais will turn 38 in September, but he's still playing at a high level as he enters his 17th season. The Dolphins are not signing Calais Campbell to be a starter, not signing him to come in and make a huge instant impact. If you heard what Omar Kelly said, and if you he's talked about a ton on his articles, ton on Twitter, and ton here, the addition of Calais Campbell helps putting somebody next to um, Chris, uh, Christian Wilkins, um, Zach Sealer, to take pressure off of Zach Sealer. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you at 38 years old, Calais Campbell is going to destroy the world, but Calais Campbell is still going to be productive, and we're going to get into all of that. This is what Cameron Wolf had to say. Six-time Pro Bowler defensive end Calais Campbell reunites with Dolphins defensive coordinator Anthony Weaver back in Miami. This was definitely an Anthony Weaver move. They had success in Baltimore. Calais, 105 and a half career sacks. Uh, immense leadership helps fill the void on the Dolphins' D. He returns to Miami where he played college football at the U for, 17, uh, for year 17. Again, if you didn't know, yes, Calais Campbell played at Miami University. Also, I really want to shout out Clarence here. Um, let me make this full image. He sent me this, and I he hasn't returned my response. This is uh, Clarence right here. Um, he said, me and Big C talked about how he wanted to play in Miami last year. Now it's a dream come true. Um, I hope you're okay, and I hope you this picture from last year, you're not in the hospital anymore and everything's fine, but I think that's pretty cool that you got to talk to him and now he's in Miami. Um, pretty awesome there. Um, this is, well, I might as well show you this way. This is Clay Campbell's numbers. Defensive, he has he had a down year his first three years with Arizona. After that, just consistently, he had an 80 PFF grade with seven sacks last year with the Atlanta Falcons. Seven sacks last year. If we can get seven sacks out of him this year, 42 total pressures, 10 hits, 25 hurries, like just amazing at the age he was at. Six sacks the year before his last year in Baltimore. He had a down year um, in 2021 where he only had one sack, three sacks. Like he, these past two years, is still extremely productive. Now, I like the move. Like I said, I don't expect him to come in, be a world beater, come in and, you know, do all this crazy stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, we're getting Clay's Campbell from when he took out Ryan Tannehill. Maybe he's coming back to Miami to make up for taking out Ryan Tannehill. Well, that was 2016. Um, but I like the move. I told you guys I wanted to add a vet defensive lineman because it made, it made me uneasy, kind of that type of rotation, especially because he's going to play defensive end, not outside linebacker. Big difference between what Phillips and Chubb are playing and what Calais Campbell's going to be playing. Because we have Chubb, Phillips, uh, Mo, uh, Chop, who we signed, so we got all our, um, our draft picks signed, and um, Shaq Barrett. Those are your outside linebackers. Calais is going to be with his hand down. He's going to be playing defensive end in that 3-4 set. So that's huge, and we needed that because from what I'm hearing of OTAs and stuff, and again, you don't really know what's happening until the pads come on, like Omar said. We needed some help there. And if you guys remember when I talked about, you know, okay, we're getting the 18 and a half million. What should they do with it? Well, they're going to sign their draft picks. And what I would like them to do is go out and get a safety, a defensive lineman, and an offensive lineman. Well, they went out and got a safety, Marcus May. They went out and got a defensive lineman now in Clays Campbell. These two signings are going to probably cost the maximum of $2 million. I'd be surprised if they get over $4 million, uh, maybe $4 million for the both of them. If they can go out and get Van Rotten, that guard who's still out there and still available, I'm good. They they filled the three needs that were still left in my mind 
to make me uneasy going into the season, I'm good. They're doing it. They're, 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 they're listening to me. Hello, Miami. Love you guys. Love you guys. Keep it up. Let's 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 do something crazy this year. So that's the one news from today of the Dolphins signing Calais Campbell. The other news is Trevor Lawrence got a big old fat contract. Big old fat fat contract. Um, unfortunately, the details have not been released, but he got a five-year, two hundred and seventy-five million dollar contract, fifty-five million guaranteed uh, average salary. Sorry, it's two hundred uh, thousand, two hundred million total guaranteed. Guaranteed at signing is one hundred and forty-two million dollars, uh, and a signing bonus of three. So you take these two, put them together. Bah, bah. This. I would be sub- I'd be shocked if his cap hit ever hits 55 million, maybe around 2029. But again, I've showed you plenty of players who, um, you know, you see that average 50 million, everyone's freaking out. He's got 55 million a year. I I would be shocked if he gets 55 million anywhere near uh, 2029. Now, I want to do something. Um, I want to compare. Because now we're going to talk about how um, this affects Tua Tungavailoa. So we're going to look up Trevor Lawrence. And we're going to look up Tua. And I'm going to compare their first four years. Well, he's actually in his third year. So we'll do the first three years of uh, Tua and Trevor Lawrence. Let's see. Tua has better record, better completion percentage, uh, better yards per attempt. Trevor has a little bit more touchdowns. But if we also go by <clears throat> the last three years, because this is what it's all going to come down to. It's going to come down to um, are we going to pay him as much as Trevor Lawrence now? So that's what it's really going to come down to. All right, so his last three years and then first three years results. Yeah, to a, besides the yardage, I'll show you. Besides the yardage, to a better all around. Record, completion percentage, Yards per attempt, yards per game, passing touchdowns, interceptions, passer rating. Over the past three years, two was better. And that is the one year uh, of 2022 without Tyree Kill. Tua is better. Now, he's a better rushing quarterback, but that's obviously obvious. Um, He also had a four-interception game. I don't remember what game Trevor Lawrence had a four-interception game. So that being said... Are they going to pay Tua as much or more? Barry Jackson came out and he said this, which I thought was very interesting. He said, in a vacuum, Tua deserves similar money to golf, Trevor Lawrence, but deserves is a different from risk assessment. If Tua's side insists on 55 million average, you ask yourself what situation slash risk is worse. The one not extending him and seeing fractions an unhappy quarterback this year who might cost more next season with bigger cap hits next two years or extending him at 55 million and god forbid he is injured again or does doesn't improve versus top d and late in the close games and then you're forced to stay together for years with no other choice that is where my conundrum is and that's where my risk is and you have to say to yourself, are you going to pay him the high money and take option number two, where, God forbid, again, he doesn't stay healthy and he doesn't take that next step and you're kind of stuck with him for a few more years? Or are you going to gamble and say, you're going to play the fifth year option? And then him being pissed, him playing, and then all of a sudden he's going to cost even more next year and he's going to cost more for the next two years. That's where it's like, ugh. now, me personally, I can't really sit here and justify paying him the highest paid money in the NFL at quarterback because there's still parts of his game that struggle. Trevor Lawrence won a playoff game, 
but also Trevor Lawrence threw four interceptions in a game, and he has a bunch of games where he kind of sucked. And last year he missed the playoffs. Like they had that division and they fell apart. So it's like this is a tough one for for Chris Greer, and it's a situation where you know the longer he waits, the more it's going to be. But I don't think it's a, a matter of him waiting. I think it's a matter of the negotiations going on and on. Like I told you guys when. Um, Justin Herbert was negotiating with uh, the Chargers. He didn't sign a new extension till July 15th. And when Joe Burrow was negotiating with the Bengals, he didn't sign a new contract till September. So it's going to take a hot minute. It just sucks that Trevor Lawrence is getting so much money. He also said Jaguars did not favor, did no favors by giving $55 million to a quarterback who hasn't been as good as Tua. Injury history complicates situation with Tua. Difficult situation. Dolphins do not have to do anything. Even though Tua is antsy, it's not like he's going to sit out the season, LOL. But most teams end up doing something to avoid unhappy quarterbacks. They don't have to do anything. He could play on his fifth-year option, and they could franchise tag him next year. They don't have to do anything. But Trevor Lawrence getting that money, now Tua and his guys are sitting back like, he's getting that much. Tua's been better. This is, we want more than that. We want $56 million a year. But again, if it happens, and I think it will happen before training camp starts, it's not about the average salary. It's not even about the the full five years, 200, 300, 400 million, whatever it is. It's about the caps hit. It's about the guaranteed money. And it's about the out. That's what we're going to look at. So comment below. Let me know what you think about signing Clay's Campbell. What do you think about Trevor Lawrence's contract? Do you think, hey, we got to pay Tua, he's worth it? Or do you want to ride with that fifth year? Comment below, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I think I got a video planned for you guys tomorrow. But here's real stay classy. That fins off.